Okay, Reed, what's behind door number two? Let's find out. Well, let's take a look. Come on in. This is my wood shop. Very cool. That's better. All right, where do you want to start? Um, <laughs> I, I don't really care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Walk us the Let's just go around. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> the, the shop is basically built um, like I said before, it's a 40 by 80, so this is divided right in half. So I've got uh, 40 by 40 on each side, and, and I did that for a reason. I usually need more room when I'm working with wood than I do when I'm uh, working with metal, except that that's actually filled up pretty fast over there. This here, I still try to keep space, but uh, it's hard to do when you got a project. Um, I built three tables originally to match my table saw so that if I had to, I can clear them off and make it one huge table or make it to where I have a, an outfeed table uh, or I use it just as assembly, glue ups, you know, whatever it takes. I do uh, some cabinetry, uh, I do some repair, wood repair, I do some finishing, and I do some turnings, uh, which I've gotten into the last few years, so it's kind of fun stuff for me. Awesome. So if we go this way, um, I built the cabinets. They're pretty plain Jane, just, uh, you know, shop cabinet stuff. You know, it's got supplies in it and whatever. Always got to have a TV out here in case the sports are running or races are on or whatever it might be. Um, you want to start us at the door? Yeah, probably at the door. Okay. So I've got a cabinet here that when I first started my wood turning, I started with pens and bottle stoppers and stuff like that. So I've got a few uh, pieces of wood that are all, most of them are, are um, import stuff. They're, they're exotics. So, you know, I've <laughs> got more than I probably ever should have, but you know, that's the way it goes. And I like these old file cabinets for this kind of stuff. It's nice, they have roller drawers and they're real easy to, to maneuver around. So, you know, I use, uh, use them as much as possible. Kits that you can buy for bottle stoppers or pens, several different kinds. What's in the bags? Oh, the, the, you can buy kits from Woodcraft to make different types of pens. So then you use uh, their product. They have mandrels and things like that that you have to use to make the pen. Okay. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Bottle stoppers, they, this is about all they give you. And then you make the wood part of it so that you basically, you, uh, you make a thread and then you just glue it in, you're done. Cool. Pretty easy. Good for yeah. gifts and stuff. Yeah, uh, that's what they're usually done, used for. You know, I, I don't uh, sell them for any kind of profit. I don't sell them at all. <laughs> I give everything away. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's fun stuff for me. Mm -hmm. This is my place to go when I want to think about nothing but doing something for myself or for someone else and forget about all the other issues that always pop up. <laughs> This is, uh, it's a Tormek sharpening system, and uh, it is awesome. It, I sharpen my, pretty much anything I have, I sharpen, I bought it pers personally for the uh, wood lathe, for the tooling, for the skews and, uh, you know, for the uh, uh, bowl gouges and stuff like that but they have attachments so you can sharpen almost anything. I sharpen our, our knives with it. Uh, I actually sharpen my drill bits with it. They have an attachment and they come out really, really nice. So it's a well-used piece of equipment here. Built the table so it can be just kind of sitting on its own. You need to move around it. So, you know, it's a real simple process. It's a slow turning stone, wet stone. Uh, so it works extremely well. All 
Okay. Um, drawers, cabinets. Oh yeah, lots of junk. <laughs> I've got. All the stuff you don't want anybody to see. No, I don't mind it. It's uh, you know my measuring equipment for uh, for my wood stuff. You know I don't mix the wood and metal very often, so you know I try to keep everything kind of a separate. Uh, so you know I keep uh, levels, height gauges, calipers. Mm -hmm. uh, different types of uh, tool uh, tape measures, you know, ones you can go around edges with, you know, for wood turning, mm -hmm. wood works. Uh, some of my sanding stuff, I use these uh, stickets. It's called it's from 3M. They're awesome. It comes in a roll, and to redo it, you basically just take, peel it, pull it back, pull it back. Tear it off. What's those called? It's called Stick It. Stick It. From 3M. Okay. I have one for all of their different grits that they make. Um, I use, say, sanding discs. Uh, I've got uh, several different kinds of uh, sanders that I use for these. Mm -hmm. They're a Velcro attachment deal. They work. They work well. Uh, these are my templates for my wood turning for when I make bowls. I just made these up so that I can real quickly see what size I can make a bowl out of a piece of wood. So um, this is screws, uh, some templates for um, for my uh, my table saw. Uh, these are for the router so that, uh, you know, they're an anti-kickback and they hold tension uh, on the wood that goes into a bit, even, a, even in the table saw. I keep my screws in different containers, so I have different screws in different containers. They're real quick and easy to grab and go. And it's just a few. I've got boxes of that stuff. This is uh, more just uh, kind of template stuff. Precision squares for woodworking. Uh, I've got a lot of this stuff where, you know, it's just uh, marking is easy to make circles, radiuses, chamfers, center finders. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. These are my uh, shaper bits, some of them. There's mm -hmm. some hardware for hinges, screws, all kinds of stuff. Here's some slides. Built by anything. Yeah. Cool. Going around all the time. Got a few clamps. Have <coughs> Never. I wish I had more of these. I've had projects where I use every one of those and still need more, so you can never have too many. I thought when I first built this rack that I'm going to never fill that. <laughs> now I got a problem. I don't know where I'm going to put the next rack. You know, it's like I keep getting more. I've got, you know, several generations of that kind of stuff. Um, it's my finishing cabinet, so I've got uh, pretty much any kind of glue that you want. I got some band saws in there. I've got my uh, T9 that I use on my tabletops. Um, I've got some some of the bottle stoppers and stuff that I've made. You know, they're pretty simple stuff. Yeah, that's the bottle stopper. Yeah, it's a bottle stopper. That's they're cool. They're great gifts. Cool. This one, it's more of just uh, accessories for saws and pretty much anything else. Some cones up there. Yeah, that's actually, I use those in the wintertime for, uh, in the spring actually, for when my yard floods. <laughs> I need that. Okay, so next cabinet. I've got uh, most of my pneumatic tools, nails, staples, and stuff like that. So if I need something, I just uh, pull it out and good to go. I've got all Senko stuff, uh, like uh, Senko. 
I don't have all their staples or nails, but um, most of them. All right, cool. Yep. All in one place. Yep. I know where to go. This is just uh, actually a conglomeration, <laughs> conglomeration of stuff. Yep, gotta have these shelves. I gotta have some place to put stuff. Randomness. It's all random. It's, uh, you see some, some antlers here. I make uh, pens from antler. So, you know, I grab them when somebody's got them, I take them. Uh, you know, I've got the spray cans that I, just, cans. just empty cans, you know, for whatever. Okay, um, you know what this equipment is. I do. <laughs> this is my uh, sandblaster blast cabinet, and uh, I use it for my metal art probably as much as anything, but also I use it for if I'm going to weld something together and I want to get the mill scale off or whatever. I mean, it's it's an awesome tool for that. Yeah, this one's special because it has the pressure it's pot. A, it's a pressure pot, yes. Pressure and and I run as you do. I run uh, beads. I don't uh, I don't run sand. Uh, so it's it shot. Yes. So you can see, and here you can see what they are. Um, along the edges, you can really see it. Yeah, steel shot. It's steel shot, and it's actually two different grits, so that you know you get the the uh, heavy and then the real fine, mm -hmm. and it uh, it actually works really well. It. What I like about it is that there's no dust. Uh, even though this has got a dust collection system on it, it uh, doesn't generate any, so it just makes it really clean. Mm -hmm. Gets used a lot, you know, especially in, in uh, my metal art stuff. If I go to use my patinas, um, I need it really clean and no mill scale, and it's faster and easier than if I had to use chemicals. I don't like chemicals. At least for that, because it'd be muriatic acid, and I just don't care for that stuff around. Mm -hmm. This is a table that I built to do my patina stuff um, for my metal art, you know, and I made it just a, like a two foot by four foot, and and it works. It works well. Patina, we'll have to find something the same. Yeah, the, there's uh, actually on the wall in the other room. I've got some stuff up on the wall. You can yeah. take a shot of that, you know, and and uh, it comes out pretty nice. You just have to kind of experiment with it. And that's what this is all about. I've got I've got a few patinas that I've played with. So, you know, this is all made by Steel FX and uh, Bill Warden is actually great at this. He's, uh, he's an excellent help. He's got great customer service and I really like to support him. So explain to the viewer if they don't know what this does. What it does typically is that uh, it will turn, it, it will colorize, if you want to put it that way, uh, your metal so that it will come out like a copper looking, bronze looking, um, blued steel. Uh, there's all kinds of different things you can do to, uh, to change the looks of it. And typically once you do this, you want to clear coat it so that it it uh, holds it, it doesn't uh, rust, because if you don't, it will continue to rust. So you wanna put a uh, coat clear on it. Okay, um, watch out for all the wood sitting around here. I've got a lot of wood that I've accumulated over the last year, and it's kind of just been laying everywhere, so. You keep it in here and it kind of dries out because the floor is heated. Exactly. I keep my shop at about 65 degrees and I try to do that year round. In the summertime it stays 65, 70. Wintertime I heat it to 65. And uh, because of the hydronic system, it's an even heat. So everything in this room is that temperature. The problem with wood is that if you get it too warm too fast and it's too wet it'll just start to split or crack so you know you want to try to control that if you can and i've i've uh, worked at that i've tried to use sealants and stuff like that and uh and it works on some woods what is this we're looking at okay this is my um mini spray booth 
uh, or overspray um, reducer. <laughs> well, I don't know what you want to call it. What, what I did was I made this because I had a problem when I first started doing some of the metal stuff or I finished any kind of fabricating, I needed to spray paint it. And I had no place to really do it. So I would lay it on a table and it would be a mess. I'd have to, you know, everything in this room started getting overspray on it. And finally I just said, you know what, I got to come up with a better way. So I made this thing to hold four, uh, they're basically furnace filters. And I bought a uh, fan uh, from Harbor Freight with a little hose and I just turned it on. I wired it to where I've got a switch right around the corner and uh, I turn it on and it creates a, uh, a negative so that it sucks the, air, the uh, uh, overspray off and I've got this bar and I just hang things with hooks depending on how heavy and how big. I hang it from the ceiling and I spray in this and it just sucks it all in. So it's, it's pretty effective actually. Um, I'm happy with the way it works. I eliminated most of the overspray. You still get some, but it's very little. And then I've also got a, an air uh, handler in the top. It's actually a filter system. I use that mostly for when I'm sanding though. Uh, and that will uh, eliminate the dust in the air. I turn it on, leave it on overnight, and the next morning it's, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Over here I've got uh, a small little belt sander, a, uh, that's a, what size is it? I think this is a 16 inch they call this. It's a DeWalt, um, yeah, I think a 16 inch. Mm -hmm. um, I've got another little um, saw here. This is a Delta, this is an old, old, uh, bandsaw basically, but uh, it almost works as a scroll saw. It's, uh, it's so small and I restored it. It was in really bad shape when I first got it. So I use that, you know, the, uh, the blades are pretty inexpensive. I uh, have an old drill press in here that I've had forever. Uh, this is my Delta Shaper. And next to this is my, it's a Craig uh, router table that actually works really well. I've done a couple modifications to it, but it, uh, it's very, very nice to have for certain jobs you do. Nice. Yeah. This thing, this thing underneath these covers, I use these covers for when I'm not working in here in the summertime and it stops the, everything from getting too dusty. This is an old, old, old shaper. It came from my wife's grandfather and I restored it, but I don't use it. <laughs> it's just here. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just kind of cool. Yeah. I like having stuff like that around, you know. Plywood storage. Uh, I've got wood, I've got, you can see turnings. I've got all kinds of miscellaneous stuff. And you keep your exhaust extraction? In my mechanical room. Uh, these are all four inch that go in and down through the wall. And uh, I have a dust collector that's in the mechanical so I don't have to hear the thing run. The only thing that's, that's tough with that are the waste gates. You know, they're a little cumbersome when you're going from, you know, planer to um, shaper to, you know, router, that kind of thing. You got to keep changing them all the time. But, you know, uh, you get used to it after a while. You know where you've got to go. I've got a couple of planers. This can be used as an actually it's, it's a, a wood master and it can be used as a planer or a sander. So I have this set up as a sander. And uh, so I'll plane with my Delta. And then if I have doors for cabinets, I run them through the sander and I don't touch them after that. They come out really well. I've got a Delta Unisaw. This was the first um, purchase that I made for my wood shop. 
after I built this and I knew I wanted it in the center of the room or close to the center of the room because you're always dealing with big pieces of plywood or whatever. So I pretty much set this in place and then built everything around it. Built the tables, the, ex the uh, extension tables, they're permanently, they're bolted on so they never get moved and you know it just makes it real easy. That's a catch-all table, you know. You always got to have something like that. I just, I try to, uh, I try to have only one of those. <laughs> it doesn't work that way sometimes, but I try to. Uh, this is a a workbench that I use for if I need to work on epoxies or that kind of thing. I'll use this, uh, you know, or if I need to put it in a wood vise, I use the wood vise for that. Made some tools, you know, for my uh, my turning stuff. Um, miscellaneous. I've got an old, it's a craftsman radial arm saw. I don't use it very often, once in a great while, but it's set up to the same height as this. Um, my Makita chop saw I use all the time. And I set the tables up to where, you know, I can run long pieces if I want to. Set it up to where I have stops on it. So this uh, the Craig system, it's a track, you know, and you can set a stop on it and be consistent with uh, multiple cuts. That's cool. Just the rail. Yeah, it works good. And then you can see I don't throw away pieces of wood until it gets so high that I can't stack anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and this is all um, hardwoods or specialty woods, uh, some VG firs, some uh, cedar, some maple, uh, some black walnut, you know, there's all kinds of special stuff with that. And then this is my, uh, my Powermatic, it's my wood lathe. I, I'm working on a bowl right now, you, this looks kind of like a mess, but it, this piece of wood had been sitting in my shop all uh, summer long and it started to check really bad. So I've uh, used some CA glue to see if I can stop that. And if I can't, then it'll be firewood. You know, you get to a point of where, you know, you're chasing it and it's just not worth it anymore. You just put on another piece of wood and go. Yeah. But I have dust extraction there. Th this uh, piece of equipment is actually a vacuum. So the, when I, re when I uh, reverse the bowls, I can put a vacuum on this and hold it in place so that I can do the bottoms, turn bottoms on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some sanding stuff back here. It's a big uh, disc sander. Like want to hog some wood off, you can do that. I purchased a, uh, a jet drum sander. This one can be a drum sander or a, a belt sander. Mm -hmm. Got some storage for nails. Um, don't use them very often anymore. You know, I go to a nail gun if I can, just a little easier. <clears throat> Stuff's pretty dusty up there. <laughs> That's a good thing. Don't reach up too high. <laughs> uh, you know, my bandsaw, you know, it's a delta and I put a riser block in it so I can get another, you know, a few inches of cutting because when I cut my logs, you know, I want to be able to, to get the most I can out of it. Um, Got a couple of fixtures that I've made. I hang on the wall. This is my picture frame jig that I use for my table saw. And then this one is, uh, is actually a uh, jig for putting in shelving pins. Um, came up with that many, many, many years ago. I was watching uh, this old house. <laughs> <laughs> kind of dates me, but you know, it, it, it was kind of cool. I watched what he was doing and I thought I could make that. So I got a machine shop, why not? Yeah. Another drill press. Um, press. Yep. I've got this, some of that's like miscellaneous stuff. I, you know, uh, sandpaper. Like sanding the, belts. I like the way you have your sandpaper. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You utilize the most room possible when you do it this way. I had a problem with stacking it in. See, now I can't even get it back in there. There's too much in there. <laughs> yeah. 
but that that was my purpose was to you know get it to where you know I could pull out and put it back in again and, and just get another piece of it and it's good to go you know and and uh, it worked really well for me Nobody sells anything like that just for sandpaper I don't think so leave it to me you know uh, this is more some standing stuff these are um, double stick uh, foam tape stuff that I've uh, accumulated over the years some of that stuff time wise it's it's not so good anymore now I go into my home stuff you know so I got plumbing stuff yeah. and I've got pipe so you know I mean there's all kinds of that stuff ABS fittings mm -hmm. my sprinkler system stuff plumbing Pipe fittings, that's a heavy drawer. Um, this is all from my days of when I had a, uh, a wrought iron business. I used to do wrought iron work and so I've got all the jigs and fixtures and stuff for making scrolls and all kinds of stuff. One way lag bolts, caps for one inch. There's more parts. Yep. One-way lag bolts, these babies, you put them in, you don't get them back out unless you uh, cut them. Kind of sad you gotta do that, but you do. Um, more fittings, my drip irrigation stuff, PVC. Nice. Yeah, tapes, I got some tapes in here. 3M, VHB, duct tape. Who don't need duct tape, right? I got a few of these clamps. I like them, they're quick and easy. They're not super strong, but uh, they do the job in a lot of cases. So I've got quite a few of them. And I, I router bits, saw blades. And then I've got uh, more <laughs> of all that stuff in here. I've got uh, router bits, half inch shank. I got a few. Mm -hmm. You can never have too many of these. You know, I, I thought I'd never have more than one of these trays. Now I can't have too many of them. They just yeah. never have too many of them. These are my quarter inch which they have their own purpose. They have their own uh, place. You know, there's some things you just need smaller stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care for the stability of them, but you know, it, it works. Um, these are, these are special. Well, they were, they came in kits. They're for like fruit. Good quality stuff. I don't like to buy junk stuff because, you know, you end up halfway through a job and then all of a sudden you're done. <laughs> you have to regroup and do something different. I have, uh, like I said, a few different sanders. This is one of my favorite go-tos. It's a little porter cable. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I've got a DA sanders. I've got a uh, um, porter cable biscuit. Um, machine. I've got a six inch Bosch sander. Um, I've got the good, yep, routers. I, I'm router poor. I've got probably, I'm guessing six or seven of these routers. They're awesome. They last forever. They're rebuildable. I think they're 1691. I'm not sure the number of it, but they're great. Um, and I just keep some of them set up for certain things. Uh, one of them's got a dovetail cutter in it and I just keep it set up totally for dovetails on my drawers. I like these little ones for just hand routering. They're real handy. And as you can see, I like the porter cables. Skill saws, I got a uh, little six inch skill saw. I've got Makita hand battery operated. This thing is handy as all get out. If you're going outside somewhere, man, I grab this thing. Got the old standby skill saw, belt sanders, 
um, yeah. planer, hand planer, jigsaw, heat gun, <laughs> you know. Cool, cool. cool stuff. Well, well, Reed, I think that about wraps it up, doesn't it? That's kind of it. That's my wood shop. You know, I nice. like working out here. You know, it's it's my getaway. It's still, you know, it gives me something different to do. So, you know, it's it's kind of like in the wintertime, this is where I spend my time. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for giving us the tour. You're very welcome. <laughs> sure it was fun. It was fun. Very sweet. Well, guys, tell Reed thank you. Tell him <laughs> we'll see him soon. It sounds good. All right.